Good morning. <laughs> uh, welcome to One Million Cups uh, here at Fat Pipe ABQ. Of course, your weekly edition of One Million Cups here in Albuquerque. Uh, who here is actually here for the very first time? First time you've actually been to this event before? Fantastic. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, so I'm going to explain a little bit about what One Million Cups is. Uh, you're actually part of a network of organizations and cities around the country. There are 115 different cities that have this uh, networking event, this uh, event to be able to promote entrepreneurs, this event that really showcases uh, the different styles of businesses that you could have in the cities around the United States. So we're not the only ones that are doing this today. We're actually, again, a part of 115 different cities that are doing it every single Wednesday morning. Um, so if you have actually been a presenter here, can you go ahead and raise your hand? I would, I would want to see some of the past presenters here. Excellent. Thank you guys so much. So, so these guys have come in here and they have the opportunity also as a presenter for you to be able to go around the United States and present in other One Million Cups as well. So one of the benefits of coming up here, not only do you get a chance to get some great advice from the community, but you get a chance to travel around the United States and go and connect to all these other uh, entrepreneurial ecosystems around the United States. Um, so a little bit about the format that we have here going on this morning is that we're going to bring on one presenter. We actually have Steve Kumo from uh, Santa Fe Fashion Week. He's going to come up. He's going to do a short presentation about what his business is about. Not only is it like, you know, just you getting to understand what Santa Fe Fashion Week is, but the back end of it, right? The setup, all the things that it takes to be able to make a Fashion Week happen. So right after then, we're going to go right into a Q&A period. And I'll go ahead and remind this uh, of you guys. But during the Q&A, you guys will get a chance to either give some feedback or ask even more questions uh, about some, something else that you're curious about. It could be anything about specifically Santa Fe Fashion Week. It could be specifically about how he has his organization structured. It could be financials. That like Anything that you guys want to talk about, you could go ahead and ask him. He doesn't have to answer them, but it'd be nice. Um, so. With that, once you raise your hand and he, and he selects you, just go ahead and say your name and the organization that you represent. That way the rest of the group could also see um, an opportunity for you to be able to say, hey, um, this is an organization I represent. If you want to come and talk to me later, um, I have a really great question or really great advice on this uh, and a chance to kind of introduce yourself to the group. I definitely recommend anybody that's here for the very first time, ask a question so that you can uh, make that brief introduction uh, to the rest of the group right before you give your feedback or question as well. Um, so One Million Cups isn't just a standalone organization here. We actually try to bring in all of the other great organizations here uh, in Albuquerque for you to do for events for the rest of the week as well as um, other resources that you can connect to after you're done here this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and bring on Sonia, another one of our organizers, and she's going to talk about some of those organizations. Okay, so actually I'm going to talk about, um, well, the things that are happening this week. So uh, first of all, today here at Fat Pipe we have Y Combinator, which is an online course, and John over here is helping run that. That's at 3.30 today right here at Fat Pipe. And also, how many of you love beer? Okay, a lot of hands, that's good. So also this weekend, well this whole week, is Beer Week. I don't know if you all know that. Um, if you want to check out abqbeerweek.com, there's a bunch of events going on in Albuquerque. And FYI, our own Charles has his own uh, Night Out Cards event Friday. So you might want to check that out, which is a crazy card game you play. And you go and you uh, talk to strangers. An example is recite one of your favorite movie lines, and the other person has to get what, guess what movie it's from. Um, or, or, I go dropping it, give something to a stranger, really anything, and convince them it has magical properties. So doing silly, fun things, drinking beer, it sounds like a great week. Um, also this weekend, how many of you have ever been to Startup Weekend? Okay, there's, <laughs> there's a few hands. Okay, so I've also been, it's really great if you want to learn how to start a business, even if it's not your own. If you go and you listen to people's ideas, basically what happens is people propose a new business and people vote on the ones that sound the best. And then those that get voted up 
create a team and that team works on that business for the weekend. And you might be up till midnight every night for the weekend and that starts Friday through Sunday. Um, and then you present your business at the end of the weekend. Um, is Nicole here? I think she's, I think she's, I can hear in the back. Never mind. So Nicole's one of the people who are running it, and that's going to be at West this weekend. So if you are at all interested in learning the process, learning about talking to your customers and figuring out what direction you should really go, because a lot of times we have an idea of what we want to do with our business. When we talk to people about it, we, we realize we should go a different direction. So that's a great way to find that out during startup weekend. All right, I think that's all I've got for announcements. Fat pipe guest, it's right up there. It's, uh, <laughs> thank you, Charles. <laughs> All right. So uh, I do want to go ahead and before I bring on Steve, uh, I want to go ahead and thank all of our sponsors. So any of you are holding a cup of coffee in your hand, that is actually by our amazing coffee sponsor, Prosum Roasters. Uh, we also have Sabio Systems. We have CNM Stimulus Center. We have Pixagon. We have Novenum. If anybody has eaten a donut or are currently holding a donut, those guys are donut sponsor. That's right. We have donut sponsors. That's how cool we are. Um, and then we, of course, the place that you're at, Fat Pipe ABQ. Thank you so much, Lisa. Lisa, that uh, provides this space for us every single week for the past three and a half years. Uh, we also have Nick Lehman Media, who is over here live streaming on Facebook. So if you guys are not able to make it here and you guys want to still participate, please go ahead and go on there. Uh, also, if you want to ask questions on the live stream as well, whether you are sitting down in your seat right now or you're live on Facebook, please go ahead and do so. And we'll go ahead and ask that question on your behalf uh, through the live stream. And of course, we have Boomtime ABQ, which does some post-processing video for us. So as a presenter, uh, you'll see there just their presentation part put up on YouTube. Um, uh, just a short clip on that. So if you guys also want to see some past presentations and see what kind of businesses have gone through here. I mean, everything from a aerial drone photography business all the way to a organic toilet scrubber. Okay, guys, we have like the slew of different kind of businesses come through here. Uh, but like I said, today we actually do have uh, Steve Kumo who is walking away from me right now. Come back, Steve. It's almost time. <laughs> so he's going to come on, like I said, do a short presentation about Santa Fe Fashion Week. So you guys will, again, get a chance to hear a little bit about that. And as the presentation goes on, keep your questions in mind, and uh, you'll get a chance to be able to answer them, uh, any questions that he might have for you, as well as any feedback that you guys have as well. And I'm going to go ahead, stop talking, and hand it off to Steve. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, how many people are into uh, fashion? Show of hands. Woo! Business? Yeah. Anybody know the word peacocking? The gentleman in the room? Fantastic. How, uh, I'm Stephen Paul, executive producer of Santa Fe Fashion Week. Uh, thank you for having me out here. How do I control the... Uh, that one. Cool. All right. So, uh, like I said, I'm executive producer of uh, Santa Fe Fashion Week. And a lot of people know when I first moved back to Albuquerque, I was selling cars for a little while. I actually moved back from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and I had a nice career as a stockbroker. And then uh, not such a good career as a land developer. And so my mom said, why don't you move back to... Albuquerque, and so after having kind of a, a plus job as a stockbroker and then going to sell cars, I wasn't too happy selling cars uh, in the snow. And so while I was selling cars, excuse me, and people ask me, why did I get into fashion? I blame that on my mom. So uh, that's uh, back in my, uh, my teen years. But while I was selling cars, um, I was out one night, and it just dawned on me I wanted to do fashion shows in nightclubs, and I was really missing kind of the Las Vegas scene of of going to those kind of events, so I was doing fashion shows at uh, different nightclubs. And I was doing about 30 fashion shows per year between Albuquerque and, uh, and uh, Santa Fe. And so that's my very first show at Imbibe. That's a picture from last year's show um, in my sixth season producing uh, Santa Fe Fashion Week. But it was quite a leap to go from here to there. And I knew, you know, at the age of 45 at the time, I didn't want to be producing fashion shows and nightclubs for the rest of my life. And I had a bigger appetite. And so Someone suggested one I produce a, uh, a fashion week, and so the thought was exciting. And so right away, I locked down my domain name, santafefashionweek.com, and all my social media. And uh, while visiting my kids in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, I was looking at different fashion week events there, and I was lucky enough to connect with uh, 
one of the producers of First Coast Fashion Week in Charlotte, and uh, as well as um, another fashion show in Miami. And so they were kind enough to come on as a consultant. And so I was still producing a lot of fashion shows, like I said, 30 fashion shows per year. I was developing the concept of producing uh, Santa Fe Fashion Week. And in the meantime, I don't know if anybody knows uh, Toby Riffick, but he was doing a, uh, all like, almost like a Wayne's World type of TV show where it was a live show. I would do a fashion segment. We would do designers on there. And uh, I think that's where I got my appetite of being in front of the camera. I really enjoyed being on, uh, doing that kind of work. And so producing uh, shows at nightclubs, doing, doing some PBS stuff, trying to figure out how to do, um, do a Santa Fe Fashion Week. And so this here is a picture. I went from doing that to now producing uh, fashion vlogs. This is actually my friend Billy Ward. We're at Magic. He had just won an Emmy for directing. And while producing a Fashion Week, some of the feedback I was getting from my designers is they all wanted buyers. And when I first thought about buyers, I thought, oh, I have to have like Dillard's, Macy's, Neiman Marcus, you know, these kind of people at my events. And then I realized that, hey, boutique owners, I mean, you drive around Knob Hill or Santa Fe, all the small mom and pop boutique owners, they buy fashion as well. And so I started doing these fashion vlogs with uh, boutique owners, kind of like diners and dives, but instead of doing that, I go to boutique owners. And by doing that, it was almost like a customer discovery because now all of a sudden I'm talking to designers why they buy what they buy. Do they go to trade shows? Do they go to fashion weeks? Are they just going to LA? Are they buying online? And so I'm learning these different um, aspects of fashion. And then the people who are watching these vlogs that we're posting on YouTube and, and Facebook and Instagram, the, the boutique owners are connecting with their buyers, but also designers are watching and understand what's going on in the mind of a boutique owner. And so that's turned out to be um, really worked out well for me as far as customer discovery. Uh, this is me also in Vegas. Uh, this is Robin Ross Fleming. Anybody watches uh, Dance with the Stars? You familiar with that show? She was the designer for that show. She makes all the gowns for that show, and she's actually showing at Santa Fe Fashion Week, which is next Wednesday. So that was really cool to get her on video and uh, talk to her a little bit about about that. I'm moving along pretty quickly here. Uh, a lot of people wonder, you know, to put on an event like Santa Fe Fashion Week, is it, you know, it takes a whole year? Am I a one-man show, or how does that work? And so I call myself more the front of the house. I negotiate contracts with the vendors, uh, be it the uh, convention center or the hotels. I go out and find designers. I do the model calls. I find sponsors. And so I do all the heavy lifting leading up to the show, but then during the show, uh, Tony Guy does all my hair and makeup. We have about 70 models volunteer. I have a woman, Deidre, who helps run the show. So it's a very big team to put on to put on such an event. This is actually a production meeting we're having, and we're actually turning my vlog into a television show. So I'm really, really excited about that. And so that's coming along. And then I just got approved to sell on uh, Amazon. So I look at like Zappos or Net-A-Port or Nastigal. None of them have a uh, what I call like kind of a brick and mortar of a, a fashion week. And so it's really becoming a funnel type system where. You know, you have a vlog, which will turn into a TV show with a, one, um, a once a year fashion week. And uh, hopefully people go to my website and go, oh, it's the Santa Fe Fashion Week thing. And then to be able to buy clothing, uh, clothing right on my, uh, on my website. So, and then my, uh, they asked me to talk about my biggest challenge. So, um, to offset the cost for my fashion designers, it's very important for me to have sponsors, okay? Because it's very expensive to put on, on an event, okay? And so a couple of years I had Santa Fe BMW Mini as uh, one of my sponsors, presenting sponsor. And so when I talk to sponsors, be it a, a car dealership or, or whatnot, they often, you know, they want to know, well, how many eyeballs or how many people are going to be at, at my event? And over a three-day event, we'll have, let's say, 300 people per day, so about 900 people over the course of the event and, of course, my, my social media following. But they're like, well, you know, let's say I'm Gertrude Zachary and I'm, I have a billboard and I have all these people going down the highway, so I can't compete with that headcount, or radio ads, which I find pretty, pretty obnoxious to myself. It's hard to compete with those, those numbers. And so a fashion week is, you know, with any event, is a kind of a high touch, just like we're here. It's really a high touch event, and so you're getting in front of your clients. And to me, you know, when we look at billboards or hear radio, we have um, what I call like media blindness, okay, so we maybe don't hear so well. Um, but when you go to a fashion week, you get to talk to your customers, and uh, these are people, if that's your demographic, you know, people that want to go to events, they have money to spend on, on going out, and so to really drill down. And so that's really my challenge is, A, getting sponsors, and with sponsors, again, 
I could charge my designers less money to be in the show because now I have sponsors offsetting, offsetting that expense. And then also in order to grow my business and be um, more relevant in the fashion industry is like Magic is a, is a huge fashion, a fashion event. I mean, there's um, designers from all over the world that come out. And so what I would like to do is right now my events at the Drury Plaza, there's a huge sponsor of mine, but to be able to hold two events simultaneously and with that, having more fashion bloggers come out, I'm very busy on LinkedIn covering those people, buyers, and then of course selling out, selling out seats. So, so again, I want to thank you for uh, coming out. I think I kept under six minutes. And uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, please ask. Thank you. That's a good question. So he was asking why, why June? And so in the past, the first two years I was at Buffalo Thunder and then I was at the convention center for two years now at the Drury Plaza. And it's always been towards the tail end of the year, October, November, September, October, November. And it was really more about pricing, not so much to be in the, the scheme of things of where fashion events are going. And so I could get a better price during those times of year. And so now I'm working really closely with the Santa Fe Convention Center. <clears throat> or rather the Santa Fe Tourism Department rather. And so they asked me to do my event in June to kind of kick off the event. And then I also, I was just recently on the radio and I got to meet the gentleman who runs uh, Zizobra. And so we're doing some cross promotion stuff like that. So it's in June, you know, one of the shows is an outdoor show, which I think in June is gonna be really wonderful in, in June. And uh, that's why we're in June. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, go ahead. Okay. To okay. Well, I don't know if it's. Ha I mean, it's fashion, so I like fashion because everybody has an opinion about fashion. So I, I can respect. I can respect your opinion. Uh, this is one of the fashion designs. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I forget the name. Um, Samantha Black, and so she was actually a Project Runway All Star, and so that fashion was actually in my show. And so we did a photo shoot there at, at Santa Fe Fashion, or at, the, at Santa Fe BMW. So that's, that's why the half-naked lady is <laughs> at the, in the BMW car. Go ahead. Uh, fashion is seasonal. Yes. And, the, and you have, so you have a stable of designers who, who create for your show, is that the Yeah, the way, the way uh, a fashion work week works is so, <clears throat> so this year I have uh, three Project Runway designers in my show, okay? Uh, one of them's returning for the third time, and then I have, like I said, the woman from uh, Dancing with the Stars. And the way fashion works anymore, it's interesting because I'm sure a lot of people have heard the slogan, fast fashion, what's happening now. And so there's a big debate because New York Fashion Week, you usually show your fashion a season ahead of time, okay? So you show your fashion a season ahead of time, and then you have a lot of people knocking off that fashion and getting into uh, Zora or H&M. And so... I call my show more of a show and sell, and so you could buy it directly from designer as a consumer, and then also invite buyers, boutique owners that can buy as well. And so the days of trying to, you know, showing the fashion, taking orders, getting it to market is much faster, just like anything else. And so, so, so who, who are your customers? Who pays you money? Okay, so it's it's several. It's, so who's pay, who pays to, for the show? Okay. So there's several tiers, okay? A, sponsors. B, designers pay to be in my show. Vendor sales, ticket sales. And so, so those all people, all those people help support my, um, my show. The ticket buyers are, are people like yourselves, tourists that come to Santa Fe. So those people pay to, to go to the show. Unlike New York Fashion Week, where it might be invite only or magic, where you have to be in the industry. So the public can go to the show. And then, of course, I comp tickets to fashion bloggers and buyers. Are, are in the audience as well. Yes, we do. So do we, do we work with any uh, local designers? Actually, yes, I do. So I work very closely with the Santa Fe Community College. They have a really great fashion program. People travel from all over the world to take their fashion program, and it's like 10 cents on the dollar compared to FIT. And so I work very closely with that school. Ezra Estes runs the, um, the program there. He's been with me since day one. And he shows, and they actually waive the fee for one of their students, which I go to their student show once a year and handpick one of their designers. So I have that person, uh, Kathy Beal, is a local designer. She's up, up in Santa Fe. I've had Native American designers. So, yes, local designers. I tell people, you know, a lot of people think, you know, the first year they thought it was going to be just broomsticks, skirts, and Santa Fe fashion. 
And so Santa Fe is really a host city. I mean, Santa Fe is already known for its art and culture. And to add fashion, I thought just made, made sense. And so a lot of my designers have never been to Santa Fe and they fall in love with Santa Fe once they come out there. So it's really great for tourism. And then people from New Mexico or they're vacationing, they could see fashion from outside the country, but, or outside, well, outside the country, that's true, outside the state, and then also some of our local designers. Uh, uh, somebody's done that, tried that. Um, not that I'm opposed to Albuquerque, just I've already built a brand for Santa Fe Fashion Week, so uh, that's, that's my brand, so. Is your jury your designers? Yeah, I, I, I'm a one-man jury. And so uh, what I do, is, it's very interesting what's going on with, you know, with fashion. I mean, you can look on Instagram. The thing with designers, A, they have to understand the benefit of being in a fashion week. They have to have the money to be in a fashion week. They have to have the line to be in a fashion week. And so it's not a t-shirt show. I mean, you're going to see high caliber fashion. But still, I mean, the price points probably start at $70 and go up to $70,000. And so you're going to see a broader range of fashion um, at, our, at our event. Yes, sir, in the back. Exactly. Okay, so the, the question is, how many fashion vlogs am I doing per year? So we've done about 15. I've done several in Albuquerque, seven, several in Santa Fe, and they're four-minute uh, videos about, about fashion, and then we also take our fashion vlogs on the road. And so we don't do a, a whole lot. I mean, I'm really gearing to hopefully be picked up by a television station like Bravo or E or something like that. So that's the direction, but I think what's happening in fashion is it's one thing to look through a magazine and look at fashion photos or, or on Instagram and look at fashion, but we're not connecting with the designers. And I like shows like, you know, if anybody watched Chopped, I mean, you have like a two minute scenario about each chef and then before you know it, you're rooting for that chef because you saw their backstory. And so I think being able to do video with our designers and the film industry is so strong here. I get the local 480s, one of my sponsors and serious scriptage, which works with the movie industry. So I think that's the direction is helping designers build that two minute relationship. And so when they see that, they see the clothing, like I wanna make the next step and buy that clothing. Hey, Sir. Hey, Steve. Hi, good to see you as well, thank you. Yes. Uh, and, uh, I've worked with you before. My first. Uh, I do have a suggestion. Though. Okay. And what I've done in the past with uh, being a fashion designer, doing a lot of fashion shows, is that I have had sponsors and producers who have guaranteed me you know, anywhere from a small amount of cells from three to five hundred dollars while before or during the show mm -hmm. and it always worked out successfully for everyone. And right. that would put more pressure mm -hmm. on the sponsors and the producer to provide for the independent fashion designer. Right. Which is what I represent. So, right. You know, I don't really that's why I don't do too many fashion shows right. or anything like that. I do still do fashion, but not in the sense of Right. Yeah. So, no, I appreciate it. So the gentleman was saying that we should either maybe guarantee the designers so much in sales or maybe pay them an appearance fee. To be honest with you, like Project Runway designers, for people that don't know, they want like a $2,500 appearance fee just to be in a, in a fashion show, plus airfare, plus hotel room. And I actually had a conversation with Richard Hallmark about this. He goes, I want a $2,500 uh, fee and all that, and I said, hey, Richard, and by this was my third year, and some of my designers have sold five, six, seven thousand dollars worth of clothing at my events, and so I said, Richard, do you want to be a celebrity designer, or do you actually want to have your clothing on, your know, people wearing your clothing? And so uh, he took a chance on me, and he came out, and he actually was very successful, and then every year he suggests which Project Runway designers want to come out. I still cover their airfare and their hotel room, but they all waive their, they waive their fee which I think speaks volumes about the event that we're, we're doing. And so they've had a lot of success. So again, if you want to participate, as you know, in a trade show, you're typically going to pay a fee to be, to be in such an event. So, but thank, thank you, though, for your suggestion. I could see you as well. Anybody else? Any other questions? How much media exposure do you get, either nationally or globally, as a result of uh, What kind of media exposure? Uh, uh, good question. So anybody watch Good Day in New Mexico, we actually filmed a mini fashion show for them, which is airing tomorrow. And so being part of a fashion week, we get a lot of free media. I'm on the radio. Uh, Albuquerque Journal's got a story coming out Friday on the venue. And I actually met someone who worked for PR Newsbuyer, has a local office here in town, and they came on as an in-kind sponsor. And so my very first, and Carol Strategies, if everybody knows Dan Mayfield and Tom Carroll, they're one of my sponsors as well. And so they actually wrote an article 
PR news buyer was, and it's like a two thousand dollars sponsorship that they put up. And so my first national PR, whatever, went out yesterday through PR news buyer, which is which is pretty cool. So. so you mentioned possibly getting picked up by a TV station or show. Right. Okay. Sure. So what am I working towards? Uh, really, what I'm working towards is being a notable fashion event where we can help designers grow their brand via digital media, television. I mean, again, you know, when I travel and I, I see Diners Dives, I want to check out those restaurants that I saw on television. And so same thing, if I'm traveling around talking about small business owners that own fashion boutiques, hopefully they'll travel and see those fashion boutiques. So it's really about building my brand as an executive producer of Santa Fe Fashion. So that's one brand. Santa Fe Fashion Week is another brand you know, in Santa Fe and New Mexico as a whole. And so that's my goal is just to keep growing, kind of bootstrapping it, building a fashion brand, building my e-commerce, and developing my TV show. So. Do you have a way to measure? Yeah, there, there's, there's obviously, you know, you can look at revenue models. You can look at people that, you know, the kind of people are attending my event this year compared to years previously, the demand to be in my show, am I able to raise my prices to my designers and stuff like that, so. It's just some trackable measurements. Yeah, what's a good men's clothing store that has good fashion that you buy your clothes? I see about this at Joseph Bank. Thank you very much. They had a sale this weekend. I dressed up just for you guys. They usually have me on a t-shirt and jeans. So, uh, but yeah, they're 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 a great great men's store. So, and actually, uh, um, Ezra Estes, I can't quite afford him, but uh, he, he he makes suits for like two three thousand dollars. I'm not I'm not quite there yet. But there's there's some hedge funds up in Santa Fe. He makes for, sir. I know. A male romper. Uh, it's funny you should say that because if anybody, yes, yes, I was gonna wear, I was gonna wear my male, I was gonna wear my male romper today, and so uh, I was actually at an event last night for a kindergarten graduation. I, I lead such a sexy life, and so one of my friends had a, a child like in a little one piece thing, and I'm like, is he gonna grow out of that? And she thought I meant, is he gonna grow out of it? Like, yeah, he's gonna get bigger. I meant, is he gonna wear that into his teen years? And so he's got a little giggle out of that. So, anybody else? Going once, going twice? I do. Uh, okay, so cool. Can you talk a little bit, as we we're building up the presentation, right. about what it takes to build a team to be able to even produce this sort of thing? Again, you've got vlogs going on, you have your website. I'm assuming that you're not you know, completely uh, technically savvy. No. Uh, so, so what does it take to be able to, to build up a team right. that wants to be part of Fashion Week? And, and who are those people involved? Okay, good question. And I still manage to get an app in every day, too, so which is kind of cool. I've been, I've been, I was paid a really nice compliment the other day. I have, uh, Rip Williams owns a, or runs GPG, Grill Photography Group, and I've had so many, I mean, that's one way to measure it too. I mean, the people have really gotten behind what I'm doing and sponsored. The Santa Fe Chamber is one of my sponsors as well. And so I think building a brand that people want to attach themselves to, that people do get on board. And so to answer your question, I, I do, you know, I'm, do, I'm still doing the heavy lifting, you know, on LinkedIn. You know, I could put in buyers, I could put in bloggers and, and whatnot. And so very busy on LinkedIn getting those kind of people, reaching out to sponsors, going to networking events like this. Uh, but again, I have a really great, great webmaster. I have a, that, you know, I do pay him. You know, most of it is outsourced. And then the day of the show, I mean, it, it's, <clears throat> it's really pretty cool because we have, like I said, 70 models that volunteer to be in my event, photographers that want to be involved in my event. And... Uh, and, and just lastly, just a sponsor. So it takes a huge team to, to put on such an event. So that's, that's my short answer. And what kind of chili? Do I get to do the chili thing? <laughs> uh, any other questions? Real quick. Okay. So, so yeah, two, two questions. Okay. Uh, the first question is red or green? I'm going to go safe and go Christmas. It's a safe bet. It's a safe, it's a safe bet. bet. Safe bet. Uh, okay. you're not, you're no, look, nobody's pissed off at me. Nobody's pissed off at me. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the last question we always ask everybody is, what can we as a community do for you? Well, as a community, I mean, you know, welcoming our designers to our events, supporting Santa Fe Fashion Week, it really is good for, good for everybody. It is good for tourism. So our event is actually next Wednesday, uh, June 7th through the 10th. You can go to santafefashionweek.com. You can buy tickets right on online. I actually use uh, Hold My Tickets, which is, which is a local company. And so... So just doing that, and then if you, you own a company or run a company or know someone that would want to do a uh, brand alliance with Santa Fe Fashion Week and, and would like to learn more about what that looks like, you know, please reach out to me. Awesome. Right, Thank cool. you so much, Steve. Thanks. I appreciate it. You got him in. All right. So we actually do have uh, a couple other announcements real quick. Uh, we always actually like talking about 
and celebrating, especially uh, local businesses, uh, but nevertheless, uh, our sponsors. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up Stu Rose, who actually has some really amazing news uh, that just got released this morning about Fat Bike ABQ. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think everyone should be pretty proud to know that Inc. Magazine just named Fat Pipe ABQ as one of the top 23 co-working spaces in the United States, nationwide. And all the others were in big cities. So how they found us, what they know, I have no idea, but it's really terrific for Albuquerque. But it's working, and, and, and the word is getting out there that, that, that we're around. So tell your friends, we need more tenants. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Thank you, Stu. All right, and Sonia, did we actually have someone that's going to come up and talk about Startup Weekend real quick? Maybe not. Eh, we talked about it earlier. Okay, so just one last thing in case, uh, and it's this weekend? Yes. It's this weekend. Yes. This weekend. It's Friday. It's Friday. Okay, so if you guys are interested, at, oh, okay, so what time? What time is it? 5.30? 5.30? At West. Do you guys know where West is? Well, not like the direction west, but like, <laughs> you know, if the mountains are this way, no, 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 no. okay, so <laughs> if you go north, which is crazy, I'm talking about west, but if you go north on Broadway, uh, on your left-hand side, you will, what, if you go this way, in your car, or you could walk there, honestly, it's within like walking distance. Uh, you're gonna see this amazing kind of glass building. Uh, that is west, you're gonna see signs. It's like across from the gas station on the other side. Uh, that is actually where Startup Weekend is gonna be. Again, uh, and are you still looking for coaches as well? Maybe, you're good on coaches? Okay, you just need participants. You know, if you're, in, and it's not about like, if you just wanna start a company, if you wanna be a part of one of these companies, you have a skill, you were like, I could do the technical piece of building someone's app or website or whatever that is, they need you. If you're someone that knows marketing, they need people that understand how to do marketing. So you don't even have to have your own idea, but it's great if you, you have an idea. You know, you gotta, you gotta go up there, you gotta pitch, you gotta pitch your idea to everybody, everybody's gonna go up and vote on the things that they think that are our best idea and then everybody gets to form teams and they need every aspect of that team, right? They need someone that knows marketing, someone that knows the technical aspect, someone that knows how to set up a business structure, right? Someone that knows how to do brainstorming, someone that knows how to do game storming, right? Um, so please, if you guys are all interested in being part of just an intense weekend of absolutely no sleep, lots of coffee and just entrepreneurial enraged of just building a business, um, Startup Weekend is definitely for you. It is, it is the most amazing experience again and, and there are some some amazing businesses. If you guys have ever heard of Teen Years, um, they started at Startup Weekend as well. Um, so definitely, guys, go check it out. Um, and uh, at West, 5:30 uh, this coming Friday. Um, so just a few days from now. So definitely go check that out. And guys, we will be here next Wednesday, nine o'clock, here at Fat Pipe ABQ. Apparently, like the you know the 23rd best uh, co-working space in the United States. So we'll see you guys later.